good evening. It is 1.59 in the morning on Friday, May 5th, 2017. I have just finished writing my notes after seeing Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. And this is the flat out truth on Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. So, for some context, back in August 2014, whenever Guardians of the Galaxy originally came out, a lot of people were really skeptical. I was very excited. I'm a big fan of the director, and I thought it looked awesome. Initially, I liked it. I gave it a B, I believe, maybe a B minus. Not 100% sure. I should probably have known that before coming into this review. Either way, I liked it, but I thought it had some issues. But the more I saw the movie, especially seeing it multiple times on Stars, I really began to appreciate it, and it's now probably one of my favorite action movies or just like adventure movies, especially of the last like 15 years or so. And so I'm a big fan of it, and you know, it's a lot of people's favorite Marvel movie, and it's, you know, it's genuinely an awesome movie. Great performances, very funny, very exciting, all around, so I was very looking forward to this one. But going in, knowing that it probably wouldn't be as good, but tr hoping it would be something different, something new. So also some other context, Marvel movies in general, and I'm talking about the movies within the Marvel Cinematic Universe that built up to the Avengers movies, are not known for having amazing sequels. Avengers, Age of Ultron, Thor, The Dark World, and Iron Man 2 are all considered across the board to be let down, even not necessarily terrible, but not nearly as good as their predecessor. The only Marvel sequel considered to be better than its first one is Captain America Winter Soldier, but that is probably only because it's so different from Captain America First Avenger. And so overall, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, I would describe it as safe. It's a very safe movie. It does a lot of what the original one was successful at without taking too many risks. The plot and character arcs go exactly as you'd expect, and there are not a lot of surprises. And you know, this is fine. I, I enjoyed myself. I really did. You know, mostly everything in this movie is great. The music, the acting, visuals, action, comedy. You're gonna get exactly what you want out of this movie. Not a lot more, but you're gonna get what you want. You're gonna get your money's worth. To illustrate just how entertaining this movie was, I only ate one of three small bags of Sour Punch Bites that I have, and I love eating snacks during movies. You know, I, regardless of the movie, I always have something to eat, and I was pulled in. I didn't even think about eating food, so that's definitely to this movie's credit. But the problem is, what really made the original movie so captivating was that it was a fresh look at blockbusters and space operas. This is the kind of filmmaker director James Gunn has come to be known as. And for a real edgy look at what it means to be a superhero, watch his movie Super with Rain Wilson and Ellen Page. Really recommend it if you can, you know, handle the R rating. But for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, he's mostly just having fun with characters he has already established without pushing any boundaries. And as a fan of his previous work, that's somewhat disappointing, but it's completely understandable. I can see where he's going with it. You know, my main point here would be there's a writer online known as Film Crit Hulk. Here's the link to the article I'm about to reference. Uh, he has an interesting take on director J.J. Abrams, and specifically you know, his movie Star Wars The Force Awakens. Film crit Hulk points out that J.J. Abrams really likes to load his movies with emotionally charged scenes, but he doesn't do enough with those characters to earn those moments. And while I do not agree with a lot of his evidence or that this guy types in all caps and refers to himself in the third person as Hulk, I can see where he's coming from. And I would say this applies to Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. It wants to deliver a lot of memorable, heart-string-pulling scenes with these amazing characters, these characters that are great and I love them, and the, the performances are pretty great across the board. But the movie also tries to do too much, and it does not properly set up most of the moment. It does some, and some land really well, but most are kind of shaky. And I think it's totally relevant that Disney produced both Star Wars and the Marvel movies, and I think that there is definitely, that's the connection. This also makes it rather comparable to Avengers Age of Ultron, in that it has a lot of good ideas, but simply does not have enough time to do much with most of them. You know, I'm actually a def mostly a defender of Avengers Age of Ultron. A lot of people aren't quite fans of it. I don't love it, you know, it's not one I watch on a daily basis. <laughs> I don't watch any movies on a daily basis, but Avengers Age of Ultron is my last one to rewatch for the Marvel series, but I think there's a lot of really good ideas in there, and it does a lot of things right. This is very similar. But it's also super disappointing, because every storyline in Guardians of the Galaxy 2 is extremely intriguing, and I really wanted to see where all of them went, 
and I really wish they just saved a couple of them for another movie because obviously there's going to be a Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 or we're going to see these characters in a different Avengers movie. And because there's not enough time to get to everything, most character development or plot points are spoon-fed to the audience. And that's just insulting. I think that's probably where the movie hits a lot of brick walls. It's just things are just said to you. And you'll probably hear this if you look at a lot of film criticism is show don't tell and there's a lot of telling in this movie which really is not fun and it holds the movie back for sure. So bring all this together and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is just a bit too ambitious for its own good and it tries to do too much which I can totally commend. I can I commend it for shooting for the stars. It just leaves too much to be desired with its predictable plot and character arcs. But I don't want to rag on it too much. I had a good time. The action was exciting and I laughed a lot and I do care about what's happening to the characters. I enjoyed myself and you probably will too if you are a fan of the original movie. So overall, uh, entertainment B, the cast and characters B+, cinematography and editing B+, story C+, visual effects B-, which all of that overall averages to a B-. So good, definitely above average, just, you know, this is just the first viewing. Who knows what repeat viewings will bring, but right now I... Enjoyed it. I definitely recommend it in theaters. And there you have it. That was the flat out truth on Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. And thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate your time and I hope to be doing more of these reviews over the summer. I'm trying to get this one out real fast here this morning. So the visuals for this review might not be as good and I hope that they improve in the future. And you know, if you, you like this review, definitely share it with your friends. I would greatly appreciate that. We'll talk to you later guys. Bye.